Hi everybody, a very good idea in your 20 mark essays uh, when you talk about supply side reforms in Zambia is to focus on the significance of these reforms and why Zambia is in desperate need of these reforms. I've written here on the board four key reasons why supply side reforms are so necessary for Zambia. The first one is to overcome the constraints mentioned in extract five. Remember those four bullet points? Poor access to credit, poor infrastructure, excessive bureaucracy, and excessive licensing and permit requirements. Um, to overcome those supply side constraints directly and to allow more of a boost of LRAS quicker. Secondly, importantly, to rebalance the economy. It's mentioned very clearly in extract five that Zambia is heavily dependent on private consumption and debt fueled government spending for growth, i.e. for AD shifting to the right. And when that's happening, great, but is that really sustainable in the long term? What if something happens to one of those two, especially government spending? If the government racks up too much debt, then what if that avenue closes down, right? What if the government has to actually cut spending or raise taxes? And what, what impact will that have on the economy? So to rebalance the economy away from these two things, to open up I in the AD equation, investment in the AD equation. Right? So if either one or the other two are shocked and we see a fall in one or the other two, you've got investment to keep growth going in Zambia. So for rebalancing the economy, very important. To diversify the economy, supply side reforms are important. If supply side reforms are uh, successful in promoting more investment, in promoting more business taking place, you can imagine that a lot of those businesses will produce goods uh, that the Zambian economy is not used to producing. Maybe goods that the Zambian economy is used to importing, like capital goods, like manufactured goods. You would expect that for sure. At the moment, Zambia specializes and uh, extracts copper and cobalt for export around the world. Now that's fine if export prices are rising, so copper prices are rising, cobalt prices are rising, and demand overseas is strong, that's absolutely fine. But what if there is a shock? What if there is a shock, maybe a global recession, a global crisis like we're seeing right now, which reduces demand for commodities like copper and cobalt? And therefore, what if the prices for these commodities fall? then it's going to impact Zambia. If Zambia only exports uh, these goods, then suddenly export revenues are going to drop significantly and growth rates in Zambia are going to drop significantly. It could lead to recession, like Zambia is suffering from right now. Big concern. So if these supply-side reforms, especially the ones targeting investment, are successful, then maybe a manufacturing base could be promoted. And a lot of the goods that Zambia imports can now be made in Zambia reducing the amount of import expenditure, um, therefore potentially increasing X minus M in the AD equation, allowing for, again, more sustainable growth in Zambia, more stable and sustainable growth. So that's a very big reason why, to reduce the import dependency of the Zambian economy for capital and manufactured goods. And lastly, for resilience in the face of economic shocks, I've just mentioned right now um, that World demand for commodities is falling as a result mainly of China's current economic slowdown. So for Zambia, copper prices are dwindling, export revenues are dwindling, economic growth is falling. Not good at all in Zambia right now. Where is the resilience given this economic shock? Well, there would be resilience if other parts of the AD equation were open like investment. If there was a lot of investment in Zambia, well that could keep growth continuing in the Zambian economy. But if that avenue isn't there because of constraints to the supply side of the economy, because of disincentives to invest, because there aren't many uh, reasons to invest in Zambia, then you're not going to be resilient as an economy in the face of economic shocks. Whereas supply, supply side reforms that encourage more investment, whether it's domestic investment or foreign investment, which encourage the growth of business and for businesses to start up more entrepreneurial activity, then you're going to have a more resilient economy in the face of economic shock. So like I said at the start of the video, when you're writing your essay, on the one hand you're making your points, you're talking about the reforms and why they are good, how they can boost long-run growth in Zambia. Add in an extra two sentences or so as to the significance, the extra significance given uh, the issues that exist in the Zambian economy. Thanks very much for watching guys. This is going to hopefully get you the A star, the maximum marks in your essays. 
which a lot of other students may well leave out. I will see you all in the next video. See you later.